Welcome to Countouts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the operating cycle. We're going to look at what it is, we're going to show you the formula for the operating cycle, we're going to go through an example of how to calculate the operating cycle, and we're going to discuss how to analyze or interpret the ratio. So what is the operating cycle? Well, the operating cycle is a ratio that measures the average number of days it takes for an entity to sell its inventory and to collect cash from debtors for those sales. So that is what the operating cycle is, the average number of days it takes us to sell our inventory and to collect the cash from the debtors for the sales that we have made. Okay, so we're assuming here that we make our sales on credit. This is basically the number of days from the time inventory is purchased to the point where cash is received from customers for the credit sales of inventory. Okay, so basically this is what we're looking at. The average number of days from the time you purchase inventory, okay, until the point you receive the cash from customers where you have sold to them on credit and you wait for a number of days and you get the money from them. So from the time you purchase inventory to the time you receive the money for those inventory, okay, from the people you've sold to on credit, okay? And this is similar, very similar to the cash conversion cycle. And we looked at that in our other lesson. You'll find the link in the description below. But the only difference between the two is the starting point. Here, it's when inventory is purchased. That's the operating cycle. But the cash conversion cycle, as we looked at it, is from the time you pay your creditors for the inventory. Okay? So that is what the operating cycle is, basically. So generally, the lower the operating cycle, the better it is for the entity. Because it means that it takes fewer days for the entity to sell its inventory and receive cash for the credit sales of inventory. Okay, so the lower this ratio is, the better it is generally. Okay, so the lower it is, the better it is because it means you take fewer days for you to sell the inventory you purchased and receive money for the credit sales of inventory. So what is the formula for the operating cycle? It's very simple. Here it is. It's the day's sales in inventory or the average age of inventory. These terms are used interchangeably plus the debtors or average collection period. Okay, so just add those two, the day sales in inventory plus the average collection period. And that will give you the average number of days. That will give you the operating cycle ratio. Now, how do we calculate the day sales in inventory or the average age of inventory? Well, we have done that one. We looked at that one, that the day sales in inventory in detail. We explained what it is. We showed you the formula and we went through an example of how to calculate the day sales in inventory. And we'll leave the, the, the link to that lesson in the description below so you can check that one out. And the data's collection period, we've also done it on a separate lesson. We looked at it in great detail, explained it and explained how to analyze it. So you can find that in the link in the description below so once you have the day sales in inventory or if you are given you just add it with the data's collection period and if you checked out our lesson on the cash conversion cycle or you're planning to check it out you'll realize that they're very similar there's only one difference and that's when you're dealing with the creditors payment period but you'll see that in that one but this is as simple as what the operating cycle is so let's go through an example and show you how it's calculated now with this same example we looked at many of the ratios related to this ratio here uh, we use this exact same example to calculate them. We calculated the cash conversion cycle using this one. We calculated day sales and inventory using this same example. We calculated the data's collection period using this same example and many more other lessons. Okay, so here we are asked to calculate the operating cycle of the company. Now, what is the ratio for the operating cycle again? It's the day sales in inventory plus the data's collection period. Okay, and I mentioned that we have done separate lessons on the day sales and inventory and the data's collection period. So you can check those ones out, but we already have the answers. And if you check those ones out, you know the answers to these two, the day sales in inventory and the data's collection period. We add the two together and it gives us our operating cycle. For the day sales and inventory, it was 46 days. And for the data's collection period, it was 31 days. So we add the two together and our operating cycle is 77 days okay so what does this 77 days mean and like any other ratio and we mentioned this in all our lessons with pertaining to ratios we mentioned that a ratio on its own 
does not mean much. You cannot analyze it if it's a standalone ratio, okay? So here we have 77 days. How do you analyze it? Well, it's good when you have a comparative ratio or comparative figure, okay? So let's say we have the operating cycle for the previous year. Now we mentioned the lower the operating cycle is, the better it is for the company. So let's say for the previous year it was 60 and this year it's 77 days as we have seen here. What does it mean? Now you can analyze it because you're comparing it to the last year. Now last year it took us 60 days to purchase the inventory until the point we received cash for those inventory. Now it's taking us 77 days. So that means last year we're doing better than we are doing this year. Okay, so you can say that we need to be more efficient because that means we may not be as efficient as we were last year. Okay, and the efficiency could relate to in, to the day sales in inventory or the debtors collection period. So I'd encourage you to check those ones out because we showed you what could increase or decrease the day sales in inventory and what you do to increase or decrease them as well as the debtors collection period. But in essence, what we are saying here is that you want your day sales in inventory to be as low as possible. You want your debtors collection period to be as low as possible. But we showed you exceptions and what to consider if it's too low okay so here that is how you analyze it and let's say you're also given a competitor's ratio so sometimes you're given a competitor's ratio you have to calculate your own and analyze your ratio so let's say your competitor or the industry average you are given so let's say the industry average is 80 days and yours is 77 days that means you're doing better than most companies in the industry or you're doing better than your competitor if your competitor's operating cycle is greater than yours okay and that is how you analyze this ratio so if the ratio is too high or it's higher than last year or it's higher than the industry average you can say that we are not managing our inventory well okay or we are not collecting our debts well we're not collecting the money from our debt as well okay there's something wrong there so you need to make uh you need to take action in order to correct that or to improve on those ones here and for you to improve them like i said check out those separate lessons on the day sales and inventory and data collection period and you'll be able to get some hints on how you do that okay so this is the operating cycle now there's a graph which helps you understand this one and look at the picture of what the operating cycle looks at and here we have it day zero is when we purchase the inventory okay and then so from the day to purchase the inventory day 46 and you can see here the day sales in inventory is 46 that means on average it's taking us 46 days for us to sell our inventory so day 46 you sell your inventory and like i said we assume you're selling them on credit or you're selling some of them on credit and then from day 46 you wait another 31 days for the money to be received from your debtors okay so you wait another 31 days so 46 plus 31 take gives you 77 days so you can see what we are looking at here we're looking at it from day zero to day 77 okay and that is the key difference between the operating cycle and the cash conversion cycle as i mentioned before okay the cash conversion cycle also looks at when we are paying our suppliers which is somewhere here okay you'll see that in the other lesson but in essence what we are looking at from the day we purchased our inventory to the day we receive cash for those inventory and that is our operating cycle i hope this lesson has made sense i hope you have gained value and if you have please consider subscribing to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers